G'day, how you going? Ian Harris from Australia here. Gonna do another painting. I'm gonna got a photo of my son. I printed it out on an A4 paper, black and white. I chose this picture because to me he's got this raised eyebrow, it's got that arty look about it. And I'm gonna do it on a 450 by 600 canvas. So what I've done on my computer. I've printed that photo out to a larger size so it will fit over my canvas. So the first thing I want to do, I'm using acrylic. So I'll wet my board and I'm just going to prime it up with a student white just to give the board some primer. Okay, that way when I'm doing my actual painting, it is not going to go onto a raw, dry canvas. It's going to be sort of, if anything, plastic coated and easy to apply my picture with. Because this painting, I'm going to do with my fingers, no brushes. I might use a brush just to get a little bit of fine detail here and there. But it's going to be a finger painting. And I'm hoping it will have that abstract look about it. So we'll just prime the board up. Okay, I'm just brushing the board, all the brush strokes out of it. Now I'm going to finish these brush strokes. So at the moment they're going across. But to me, this picture is up and down. So to help me with the little minute lumps in the canvas, I'm going to finish the brush strokes up and down. It's just going to give it that little bit of easiness as I'm painting most of the picture downwards. They'll come down with the brush strokes. I'll put a bit around the sides as well. Now what I'm going to do is put that... I'm going to take this on top of that when it's dry and carbon just the basic outline of the chin, where the base of the nose is, the line of his mouth, and the size of his eye. And then we'll get to the next stage. Okay, I'll take that on there, and I've carbon the basic outline. Then I've got my pencil. I'll keep that taped on there. And I'm starting to shade in areas because it's going to be black and white so areas that will give me reference to where shadows are so I'm using this as my reference and I'm just get all these dark areas just roughly put in there nothing has to be exact so as soon as I get my paint mixed up, I've got an idea where I'm going to attack the canvas. Alright, I've pretty much shadowed in my areas where I want to guide me where to put the lighter and darker coloured paints. And then the rest will be all dark over here. So now that's ready to get the paint mixed up. Have me reference picture on the side here and get into it. Well we're back again. I've got all my paints mixed. I've done three different shades of grey and I'm ready to start using my fingers and putting it on the board. Now with my Reference picture, I'm going to start with the lightest ones and get the lightest colours in there first. Go from lighter to darker to darker. And then at the end I'll probably use a brush for little details. And um, detail the black over it which hopefully will bring it all to life. So, what I'm going to do is just bring all this... The light 
lighter colours can go over these darker areas because when I put the darker over it, it will push different colours behind and in front of each other. I'm just, I've never painted with my finger before. I did one in colour but it was a bit blotchy. I don't want this one to be blotchy, I want this one to be a bit better. And if I can't get the desired look I'm after, I'm probably going to go back to a brush. Turn my light off. I'm using a brush because I can't afford to put too much retarder in there, and the more I put in there, it starts making it impossible to use. So I'm going to get all this tone in with the brush, and then we'll gradually put the darker tones where they've got to go. I'm just using a filbert brush for this. Just going over all the lines that I've put there for references because it's not going to be a spot on painting like a photo color finish, it's going to be abstract -y. so kind of painty, arty, messy looking. But idea what's happening. I've got some sponge from outside. I'm going to use that as well. I want to wet my sponge. You can see how these are pretty harsh. And hopefully get some of the paint dirty in there, get it wet. I want to try and blend that. Oh, but I'm not too wet.
Okay, I've got me lighter colour grey. I'm putting that where all the white areas are. It's white, but it's just dirtied up a little bit with the slightest tint, which is black, obviously, to get the grey. But it's the dirtiest white. That will allow me... So if I've got to put a highlight on this area, on these areas here, I can use pure white to bring it up. Where if I use pure white from the word go, I'm not allowing myself that window of opportunity to get some brightness in there. This painting has taken me, I've started it a few days ago, and I've just been doing a bit here and a bit there. So you probably notice that things are changing, what I'm wearing and weather and everything. Also, this is going to allow me to blend that lighter tone into the medium tone. Instead of it being on a raw surface, I'm trying to. And it's like anything, don't think too much, just get it on there and move your brush across if you're sort of hoping you don't make a mess, you're more than likely to make a mess. See, once all these tones are done, once I put black over the whole lot, it'll bring it to life for sure. It's like when a while ago I did a rainbow zebra picture and it was all colours and highlights but once the actual black went over the top, it sinks everything back into the picture and brings it to life. You get an idea what's happening now. I'm just adding some of the darker tones of grey now over this. using some of the whiter, dirty white just to get his white t-shirt shoulder into the picture. It looks a bit there, it's too dry. Oh, that's better. Get all these colours in there. It's good to get them in there because when you do creating your painting. What colour is his arm? Probably can do the arm the same colour and then tone it as I go. Could probably be a little bit dirtier. What's under there? A bit of white under there. There, that's all black, but that can be his, a bit of his arm can be white, dirty white. This sort of painting isn't really for a beginner. You need at least some sort of understanding on how things sh should look with 
tones and dimension and whatnot. Okay, get some more toning and shadow in this arm here. If I can. First time I'm trying something like this, so uh, it's an experiment and hopefully it's going to look reasonably well. Now I want a bit more lighter colour just to bleed that back. Too harsh there. Yeah? I suppose it's a bit like doing a cloud, blending it. on brushes but my filbert brush has been sitting in the water it's distorted the end of it and as I'm trying to blend it's balking the overall finish so I'm going to try another brush which is more of a rounder one because When it's done, I don't want it to look blended, then all of a sudden some watery brush strokes through there. And what I'm doing is getting a bit more darker colour around all the joints and creases. So I'm not really particularly worried how messy they look. Just so long as the overhaul blending colours are there, like I'm doing the fingers now in his wrist. And... Once I get me black and then just sharpen it up, it'll sink all this stuff that I'm doing now back in the picture. these little things I won't make me dread doing a painting but once it's done <laughs> you're glad you did it I'm just putting some tails on all this creasing in his shirt just to give it from a distance some sort of life trying to add some
dimension and life around this eye because I don't want it to look. You can do it, sometimes you can do a picture and you get the eye wrong, and it just destroys the whole picture. So I'm just trying to hope that doesn't happen. Let's see if you can see any difference in that yet. At the moment, I'm just tidying up little pieces here and there before I actually put the black on. Because once the black's on, if I need to put any lighter colours in, which I've done before on paintings, you drag the black into it and it makes a nasty little mess. So I'd rather take my time and just gin around with the with the picture until you know black's gonna hide things and sink it back. That's what I'm looking for in this now because most of this is done except for the black. But I'm just trying to make sure, like I said, I don't leave anything out. I did a little practice one last night, just freehand. But that's sort of what I'm going for, but in this bigger one. Now what I'm doing, the last tone colour, I'm adding a darker grey. Just before the black, because if I put black on this mid-tone, it's going to not marry them too well in my eyes. That's what I reckon. Not what it should be or whatever, it's just what I reckon for this piece I'm doing. So I'm just getting it ready with this mid-tone grey. It's virtually all the way up here. Blend it into that darker grey out of all them. And then when I put the black, bingo! Just getting some more darker greys around this eye. I'll show you in a minute. Just to try and bring his eyes to life. What's the other eye got going there? It's got a lot of... The other eye squinted. It's a bugger, eh? What a bugger. I'm just going to have to squint my eyes and hope it looks reasonable. Australian crows and magpies are, I don't know if you can hear them,
See, I don't, to me, there's no real way to teach this painting. It's like, all right, you know how to paint, you've got a gist of how things should look. It's just a, something to show you what I can paint, I suppose. This is all black under here. This is the colour before the black, the one I'm doing right now. So much for using my fingers, eh? <laughs> okay, let's... This filled in, ready to black up. Bit of a, something like this, I don't know, you've seen the monkey I've done, the zebra, the butterfly, different subjects. It's just a break away from the, the normal or the um, typical, you know, sceneries and stuff. Try and do a bit of everything and anything. See, I could use a bigger brush to fill in all this background, but this brush here, what it's doing, I haven't got it thinned down too much, but it's leaving a texture onto the canvas, so it doesn't look, yeah, I did a painting a while back, I liked it, but the more I look at it, it looks like a print, that it's an actual painting, I like my paintings they're going to have that certain jest about them to, to look like a painting, not like a print. But everybody's different. Some people might do a piece of work themselves. And it doesn't mean me or someone else says something. It doesn't mean that's the way it has to be and should be. It's just our way. Okay, this is almost ready for the black. I'm going to go over it, just have a fine look at it, and see if there's anything that can do with a bit more blending and highlighting just before I add the black. Because I want the black, like I said, to be the last coat. I don't like this corner bit here. What I'll do is I'll just sort of Okay, what I'm doing, I found what I can do. I'm bleeding this 
medium tone grey into that darker grey, just bleeding it into there, so it's not like a, a harsh joining of the two colours. Because in my eyes, these, where his head's in the shadow, you want to give it some dimension. So I'll bleed those into there. I'm just sort of, where is it? I've got that much paint on my palette. shadow of his ear in there somewhere. Now I've got just plain white. It's not dirtied up or nothing and I'm going to try and highlight now everywhere where I see fit that needs to be highlighted. see the difference of leaving that first white dirty so this white here will highlight it. Now, the last piece I'm up to is the black. The black's just bringing this thing to life now. I'll just do this brow and I'll show you how all those greys and white tones have been set down. Do under the nose for you, because that's got to be. <sighs> what this is virtually doing is sharpening all these lines, make them deep. finish the black now and then we'll finish the video. Okay, just getting these finishing touches of the black around here to give this painting some depth and then we'll sign it and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, this black is just about finished. Feathering off this eyebrow into the dark side of the face here. And I'll show you what that looks like. You should probably cannot see it from there. OK, 
Okay, that is finished product. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching me paint the portrait of my son. That was my reference picture. That's what it turned out like. I'm happy with that. It's arty. Goodbye. Good luck. Good on yous.